Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is fun. Let's hear it. What do we got for me? Oh well, I thought maybe we'd introduce ourselves first. Oh, I don't care about that shit. Oh fuck it. All right, so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask a question to this lovely lady right here, and uh, and she's gonna give you the answer. <laughs> uh huh. What is enlightenment? I got those answers right here. <laughs> I think he just grabbed his balls. Um, that's pretty close. Grabbing the balls is pretty damn close. If you can sit in the space of complete presence, not yearning for anything, and uh, hitting that point of complete stillness while holding your balls, I'm pretty certain it's there. It works. What is enlightenment? I think that enlightenment is a... You want me to give me a real opinion? Well, if you got one. The term that they use, uh, it's called immortality in Taoism. Um, it's attaining Christ consciousness in Christianity, right? The Christ-centered heart, but being a Christ-like person or Christ embodiment. And then it's uh, enlightenment in the Buddhist sect. Do they have a name in Judaism or anything like that? I don't know. Um, anyway, enlightenment. It's the pursuit of something that makes you feel damn good so you don't give any fucks. That's the pursuit for Oh, wait, wait. The pursuit. The... That's the desire for... Why do we discuss it? It's because it's pursuit to not give a fuck. Uh, but what is enlightenment? It's the state of not giving a fuck and feeling completely immersed with the all of everything. Attachment and detachment all at the same time. Or, in my kind of terms, in my kind of terms... The space of being in the fabric of space-time with complete acceptance and immersion so that form and formlessness are indistinguishable yet can observe each other at the same time with loving presence and without preference. You know how I know I'm not there? I don't know what the fuck you just said. Shut up. No, no one knows what I said. Um, <laughs> because it didn't. It was made made of riddles. Well, so okay, so I've got I've got questions though. If you if you don't mind. <laughs> Shut up. What? Yeah. So uh, well, I didn't know this was a question and answer. No, but it, that's, it seems like it's working. So I'm gonna do that. I did my best hair for the job. I know you got the I Dream a Genie. I, yeah, I'll keep it pro. I, I whacked off to I Dream a Genie as a kid, I think. And so it's just yeah. All right. Now what were you gonna ask? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, all right. So, if if enlightenment is the state of not giving a fuck, uh -huh. uh, but it's also uh, attachment and detachment. It, does that mean just like not giving a fuck whether you're attached or detached? I don't think so. I I don't think you think that either. Well, so what? I guess I'm asking you to break that down. Okay, so I'm highly visual, as you well know, and everything comes up in geometric space for me. And so when you say the word enlightenment, what I get is literally a visual okay. download of, of dark matter, so nothingness, but a crystalline grid um, that holds a structure so that there's waveform happening, particle and waveform. And the, so I see a visual of what the state of that is. And so it's no... It's not that anything, it's not that there is attachment or detachment, but it's rather that they coexist and they flow into each other in constant union. That yin and yang, that aspect of bringing all aspects of self, masculine and feminine of self first for soul retrieval into embodiment of human form in the heart center, and then soul retrieval done to bring masculine and feminine in partnership together so that you bring your dual nature together, I bring my dual nature together, then we bring the duality again together, and then it flows back out, and then it expands infinitely, and then that's where compassion comes. So, now I'm hearing a, a flow between particle and wave. Right. So... Infinity, yeah, that's right. So the word light comes to mind, which is what, scientifically, we can actually perceive as particle and wave. Um, but, uh, but perhaps... You're saying that really everything is particle and wave. I think that's inherently the truth. So, okay. Um, so if everything is particle and wave, 
like light, mm -hmm. then enlightenment would be the state of being what one is. Take yes, putting your true nature, what one is, into form and not having a resistance to what is, whether it's pain or pleasure. Too much pleasure can scare you because there may be pain that follows because that's the, that's the inevitable nature of all things. And too much pain may scare you because you're never sure if you're going to have pleasure again. Well, resistance is friction, right? Right. So and, movement. But friction, well, friction creates movement, but, right? Okay, so you're going to do the science aspect of it and the nature of being human. And the nature of being human is that there is friction. But where there's friction, and um, I love this in terms of, this, my, favorite, my favorite word to use enlightenment in is in aging. Because I like to, uh, to see it as the space of, uh, as we age, we literally create through our organism, our body, a space of uh, chemical processes that create light. And, um, and that, so in theory, aging and chemical processes and the chemistry of being and engaging with your environment, whether through food or people or um, projects or whatever it is you do, or animals and nature, it creates more radiance. And so as we age, we become more radiant if we're doing the chemistry of being a human that is both divine and demon. Divine and demon. Okay, so now you're bringing in a whole nother can of worms to this discussion uh, of good true. and evil. No, you are. I said soul retrieval earlier. That's true. <laughs> Same thing. So, so it, all right, so let's just abandon the word enlightenment right now because who fucking cares? And go into good because you and can't, evil. And you don't care. The reason we don't care about enlightenment is because there's no point in identifying something that is a, a space of presence. You don't identify presence and you don't pursue presence. You just do your work to be here. Well, I was being sarcastic. I really fucking care. And I'm working really hard to try to do something. To be enlightened? Yeah. He's lying, by the way. I never lie. He weaves a web. For your entertainment. I meant to say that. That's <laughs> that's not a lie. So good and evil. Okay. Like lying would maybe fall there or maybe not. You know, I mean what okay, so what is it what is the deity and what is a demon? A deity and a demon are different frequency wavelengths of, of uh, space time. Um, and we form an attachment to an identity of divine or demonized by putting it in our material form. So if somebody sings a song at a high note versus a low note and you're sensitive in your body to the, the frequency, right? You feel your form shake, so it affects you. So if something's demonized, it's actually usually of a more desire realm, lower chakra space. Is and that why Robert Blount sings so high? He's pretty sexy for somebody who sings high, so he maybe has his yin yang merged. He's very he's a very good balance, isn't he? Yeah, I used to love Robert Pont when I was young. Speaking of people, I thought he was so sexy. So, <laughs> all right, all right. So low frequency or desire would be demonized. Um, so, would aversion be divine? Is aversion divine? Aversion. Aversion? Oh, yeah, if desire, I thought he said yeah, if desire is demon, then is aversion. <laughs> aversion. Divine. Yeah. Being turned off by something. Yeah. If I'm desiring something and it's demonized, then if I'm turned off by it, is it divine? Well, it's an aspect. That's an interesting question, okay? So I know you have your own opinion on this. That's why you're asking me. But I would say that that makes sense. If you have an aversion to something that is demonized, then yes, it is a higher frequency wavelength that's either coming out of the collective consciousness of all the wavelengths of people harmonizing and saying, this is what the community does, this is what the culture does, this is what we expect, and this is what is divine so that our community stays together, or it's coming out of some other aspect of you internally that says, if you continue to do this shit, you uh, you are going to possibly destroy yourself 
because you have an aversion to something that's been demonized or you're possibly going to break through. You, that's a personal journey. I don't know that answer. What's your answer? Well, no, I was just, uh, it was, it was a, a yin and yang of you equated the demonic with desire. So I wondered if the divine was equated with diversion, with aversion. Um, but you took us in a different route of uh, becoming where everybody's on a journey. Um, which brings in a whole nother topic of journey. It's all the same damn thing. Okay. Enlightenment, soul retrieval, looking at your demons and your, and your divinities, your, your deities, um, uh, or your desire versus your, um, it's not, the aspect of spirit for you is what? If it's not a space of designer desire because we talked about this with carnal spaces right T typically the body and the soul the corporeal soul um express itself through carnal spaces right okay and so spirit expresses itself through um discipline in presence hmm. the meditator the writer the philosopher that there's some engagement between the gateway of uh of spirit to mind to body up and down that is not it's non-carnal and that's why there's a tendency to demonize the carnal because the spirit or light worshippers versus dark worshippers have these this dichotomy what do you want to say about that um i don't know i'm i want you to ask me a question now okay. i'm sick of this i'm sick of this thing where i feel like i'm i'm asking and you're answering he set that up all by himself, too. Yeah, it was my idea. I'm sick of it, though. <laughs> okay. What is... Uh, what is your desire, your highest desire, and you don't have to share this fully, but highest desire for people to know from what you've learned personally um, about holding space for your self-identity and the identity of other to both be expressed without one or the other becoming less. Wow. Um, the only word that comes to mind is gentleness because I think any preconception of what one's own journey is or what another's journey is uh is erroneous uh, just by its nature uh, the idea that something ever really knows where it's ultimately headed uh, we know as organisms where we're headed we're gonna die but like what happens between now and then is defined by millions of variables that we can't see. And then what happens after that is defined by millions of other variables that we can't see. And the only things that we have to base either uh, trajectory on, the one from now until the grave or the one after the grave, is based on uh, memory, which we all know is uh, fucking fallible. Uh, memory and stories of other people. Uh, and so... The only thing I could say is wherever it feels like guidance has come from in the past for me, um, and that includes things that felt really righteous, and it includes things that felt downright wicked, um, through my journey, which has included quite a bit of both, I've felt like the villain and like the hero several times in my lifetime. Um... And I've villainized and deified several people, uh, often the same people. She's, she is my uh, villain and my hero many times, uh, a daily. Um, yeah, so, yeah, because of the unknowns and because of the adventure and because of the constant flux of pleasure and pain in life, gentleness and kindness are the only fucking things to allow myself to be where I'm at and do my 
fucking best to allow uh, other people to be where they're at. Yeah. And it's the flow with others that I experience the most as the limiting factors on being able to express myself. The flow between my desire for me to express myself and my desire for them to express themselves. And I think that one of the most conflictual areas that when you look at the gateways to enlightenment or embodiment is what I really like to call it embodiment because when you're fully embodied what is there to fight it's bringing the light within right the um so that your cells this particle on wave dance um feels healthy uh, you know it's uh, that it, that even in the you know i love lucy did you see that not the not the tv show did you see the movie with scarlett johansson i think that that movie does an amazing job looking at um at uh, an expression of this discussion of of demon and divine and the sensitivity within the chi realm and these concepts of enlightenment because she goes on that journey of becoming enlightened and more awakened and unified into the whole and at the same time she looks like she's getting more violent while getting more powerful and so you see her you see this growth of, of spirit and what looks like a lack of compassion, which happens. When your spirit grows, you actually do start lacking compassion, which they don't talk about, do they? You start going, ah, uh, whatever, that happens to everyone. Because it's so universal. Yeah, apathy. Well, I don't know if it happens to everybody, but I can definitely <laughs> relate to apathy. Um, I think it does. Yeah, it, you know, it's so funny. I mean, actually, it's tonight... It's the dark night of the soul, isn't it? I Probably. Tonight, I just felt uh, a lot of places where I'd been really apathetic and and felt kind of alive again in, in some ways, which, <sighs> which, again, kind of goes back to that journey of vacillating between... Uh, looking at things as a whole and being able to appreciate a moment and looking at things as uh, linear um, steps to take and looking at a single place in time as uh, its own reality. Hmm. That, yeah, if there is a singularity, then what is there to pursue, is what I heard you just say. A single Absolutely. place in time, that if you have a fixed point, and this is the only point, which is the now, then what is there to pursue? Yeah, nothing. Enlightenment and the pursuit of presence can cripple you from being a human. And you've got to watch it. Because if you bring all that spirit into this body, that's where the apathy sets in. Um... I never thought about it that way with you, even. What do you mean? That the it's it's it's, it's interesting. It's an aspect of identifying these spaces where there are disharmonies or incongruencies on the connection between body, mind, spirit, soul, and these expressions of self, and that um, that if there's a if there's a issue between one of the four talking to each other and har harmonizing then um, I never thought about that space of if you bring in too much light, um, what happens is it, it puts a natural and innate balance in the, imbalance in the rest of the system so that if you've seen too much of the divine and experienced too much of the divine, that you don't even appreciate your demons anymore. And if you don't appreciate your demons, there's no reason to live. Because there's nothing, it's the wealthy. If I got all this money, I have no motive to work. And if I don't know how to, if I don't have anything to work for, then what, do, you know what I mean? It's, it's what happens in wealthy families. They actually get apathetic about their life because then they don't feel like they can contribute because they didn't get to create anything on their own. And then they get this, this, uh, this existential dilemma relating to wealth. And so if there's a wealth, an abundance of spirit, an abundance of money, an abundance of family. That happens in the Hispanic cultures. That happens in the Asian cultures. An abundance of family. Um, mm -hmm. Or the lack thereof. That these imbalances, that if you have too much of one thing, that it makes sense when you said that you pursued the, uh, 
the demonized aspects, right? The villainous aspects or those expressions Pursued also. Them. Yes, you did. You you pursued these gateways. Oh no, of just bringing that I, and expressing just that I them. Had them. Not yeah. Pursued. I, I guess I didn't use the word pursue. No, it's my my kind of languaging. He hates that word. I really do. I. It's personal. He hates me, and so he hates that word. It's also true. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it. You might hate me too, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Middle fingers up, Beyonce. I'm not doing it. You see it? I control myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I did. Oh, I put my hands up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the whole intention was there. No, Full no, intention. I'm an innocent. Yeah. I'm innocent. She's innocent. <sighs> I don't know. This is could go it? on forever. Is this the end of the video? I, I think, think this so. is 20 minutes. Oh, there's a time limit on enlightenment? No, there just is none. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. All right, well, thank you all. Yeah, thank you. And, uh... Love you. <laughs>